says things like WAC 100 shut everybody down on the East Coast. But uh, he didn't shut down you. He didn't shut down Doggy Diamonds. He didn't shut down Jim Jones. Who said that? Hassan Campbell said that WAC 100 shut down everybody in the East Coast. And it's like, why are you discrediting all of the New York entities, you know what I mean, that are standing up to this guy? When did he shut us down, New York down? He never. You talking about on Clubhouse? Listen, of course he can win a conversation, an argument, or anything if he's on Clubhouse, which he he has the upper hand. If I come, if if you come on my channel, right, and you disrespect me and talking shit, everybody else that's going to be in there with me, they're going to get at you because I'm the people's champ when it comes to my own channel. Clubhouse, he's the people's champ. They're going to rock with him. When I went over there, I called him out. I did everything and said everything the best way I can. He didn't want to answer me. He shut him down. He shut Hassan down. I don't know if you've seen the video when he said, when somebody told him, yeah, Hassan been talking about you and game. And um, Wax said, what? He been talking about me and my homeboy? I know none of that. If I knew that, I would have never with this nigga. He said, you been talking about me and my homeboy? Hassan was, sh I never seen nobody get scared over a phone call. Hassan was shook. He said, what did you say in the video? Huh? And Hassan was like, I don't, I don't remember what I said. I don't know what I said. <laughs> when you know he know what he said. All he got to do is say anything. I said, snot box. I said, you bitch ass nigga. You could have said anything. He know what he said. Now what got you under pressure? You don't know what to say. Now, I must admit that you got some New York dudes that did get on the bandwagon, and that's why I make it look like WAC 100 is just running through New York and just shutting us down. No way in the world he's shutting us down. You know why? I didn't see him in New York uh, do nothing to nobody. I don't see him in New York walking through the streets, making videos in New York, talking shit at concerts, anywhere. I see the game come to New York. But I don't see that coming to New York. I don't see him coming to Connecticut. I don't see him coming to New Jersey. I don't see him coming nowhere on this coast. And all he did was the same thing that Hassan do. He just creating enemies, right? So when he finally do come on that coast, somebody going to uh, make a bowl of oatmeal with his face. They're going to make a bowl of oatmeal with his face. Whack 100 can't shut down shit. That's it. And Hassan can't shut down shit. They both the same. Bitch made. That's it. I said it. So I want to take it over. I want to take it over to Chicago. What do you Chi think of? Yeah, Chi Town. Uh, what do you think about Hassan Campbell saying that FBG Duck is local and Big was a superstar? That was kind of foul the way he kind of put them in levels like that. Because, you know, Big came up at a certain point too. Rapping in front of bodegas, you know what I'm saying? FBG but, but Duck it, just didn't get to make it to a certain point in his career. That's, right. that's the only thing. FBG Duck got before his time. If you so, you think if he didn't get, he wouldn't be a super superstar today. These kids today is getting way more stardom than back then. I mean, as it grows. Coming from Eric B and Rakim, uh, MC Shan, um, Grandmaster Flash, as the rap in the years grew, you seen that people began to get bigger and bigger. And when I say bigger, I don't mean just start them under the light. I'm talking about they getting more bigger, bitter, bigger, better and bigger contracts, right? They multi-millionaires. They getting way more money than Biggie and them was getting. Look a little way dirt. from the NBA, from baseball, boxing. It's way more money to be made today. Little baby is filthy. Look at little Dirk. Little Dirk, filthy. They filthy. Like rappers back then couldn't even floss like these little young kids doing today. These contracts that they getting, man. So you can't compare Biggie to no FPG Duck. Then he tried to compare the, uh, uh, FPG Duck mother to Biggie's mother. There's no comparison, man. Those these are two different. Listen, New York and Chicago are two different plantations, different states. These are two different slave plantations with different type of masters. Chicago got 
the worst. You know why? Because they master are not overseeing what the f they doing. In New York, they got a tight grip on what's going on out there. Opposed to Chicago. You go to Chicago, they kill you like eating cereal in the morning. Don't give a shit. They don't care. I remember I asked Jojo Capone one time, right? And I at when I at first I couldn't understand it. So I did an interview with Jojo Capone. Salute to Jojo. Right. I said, come on, man, we, we could we could do better because you know, I was saying some shit about um we don't have to carry guns and this and that. And Jojo said, nah, yes, we do. We have to carry guns. Where I'm from. I'm like, no, you don't. And I'm trying to argue it until I fully understood Chicago. Until I fully understood Chicago. Chicago ain't nothing like New York. In New York, is this is peaceful. We are in the Beverly Hills. Connecticut, Jersey, it ain't nothing, man. Chicago is Baghdad. Go on them blocks over there in Chicago. That is Baghdad. That is enemy territory. You go to fuck around over there if you want. That's one thing I wish. So, so I can write a book or something. Do it. Do it. Write a book. Make a movie. So you could go on and sign your book selling with the with them executive tell you, yo, you gotta go on a tour to Chicago to uh LA to do a book signing. It will be over. He won't even be able to sign the book. He's gonna have to sign it from his house and send it in the mail. Because he can't do no book signings. <laughs> he always talk like, yo, I'm doing this and I got this. Book. You you always see him. It's gonna be a time where he's always gonna say, "Listen, man, man, I'm building with my people. My, we build the businesses, this and that." He been doing this for over since I've been on here. He been saying that for the last two years, and I ain't seen their business built yet. Nothing. This man just came home. I don't hear no success story about him. As far as he's working, he got a job, or you got him a job, or this business that's in progress. Because you know he talk, he run his mouth. He he want to be flamboyant and show everything. But if he ain't really had a business, he would have been showing it. Look, this is a building we building right here. I just finished buying this storefront or We're doing car rentals. Yeah, anything he would have showed. Man, that man, he ain't got nothing. He ain't up like that. Get out of here. He could fool them with that, like he got all this money and all this other shit. You're broke. You are broke and a joke. Okay, and money ain't shit money in your hand that's not shit that shit don't mean nothing that money don't mean nothing what you doing with it money what, what you doing with it just holding on to it you ain't building nothing all that fake jerry what you doing son actually mentioned you in his last video mm -hmm. the son actually mentioned you in his last video he said a bronx dude is on top of the game and you're going to keep riding this wave to get your numbers up but the reality of it is, without my name in the title, and even with my name in the title, they don't want to watch you no more. It's time to retire. <laughs> How do you want to respond to that content from Hassan? What did you think about him actually putting your name in the headline? No, he been putting my name in there. He been saying my name. So it was a point when I first came out, right, and I was saying it, and he always was saying, I'm not going to say your name. You want me to say your name? And when I made a video about him, right, they was getting on me. Yo, why are you doing that? Why are you coming out? I said, because he's talking about me. He ain't even say your name. I said, that's why. He's not going to say it, but he's talking to me. He's saying, I ain't going to say your name, right? So, like everybody else, you got to come up with a tactic and use what you got to use to make him say Because he's stupid. He's a fifth grader. I know how to make him say my name. Well, Beyonce, say my name, you bitch made nigga. And I Push them little buttons. I said, oh, I know how to hit him hard. His girlfriend. And then next thing you know, he started saying, that nigga 10 toes down, boom, 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 boom. Now, his audience is wondering, who the fuck is 10 toes down? And now they start coming over to my page. So, when it comes to him as far as me getting views or anything, a lot of my subscribers came from Kwame Brown. See, people don't know. They came from Kwame. If you go back and look at my videos before Kwame, I think I had about 8,000 or something. I was at 8 or 9. I ain't even hit 10 yet. 
Kwame Brown put me on his channel and I was speaking on there. And then, yo, my followers went up crazy. I got about three, four thousand quick. Bang. And then they was hitting me up. Yo, we sent over, we came from Kwame Brown. Boom, we seen you on there, whatever, whatever. And then that's when the floodgates started opening. So now another thing, right? If I say something about you, Mikey, right? And some of your followers come to me, I must be saying something that they're interested in, right? The majority of the followers that I took from him, they didn't come over. To, I took them. And he don't like it. <laughs> And now they shooting at him. The majority of them that came over, they enjoyed what I was saying. <clears throat> and I guess they was just waiting for someone to speak out against the dumb shit that he's doing and somebody that's sincere. And that's gonna be, you ain't gonna get no views with or without me. I'm still getting views. <clears throat> I'm still getting views, right? And the number of viewers that I'm getting, it doesn't matter. If I get one person, that's one person who I got through. He'd be getting over 100,000 views, right? My question be to him, out of that 100,000, give me one life you have changed. Whether it was with the knowledge that you have dropped on him and you had a private conversation, phone call with him, how many jobs you have given out, how many people you have found housing for. How many people, because you were criminal and the, most of all your friends and everybody's in prison. How many of your friends that came home that you've given jobs to or you helped get them uh, room and board? He can't produce none of that. So it's not about the views with me. It's about the work. How many times you put your foot on that concrete and went out and did the work? That's why the people come to me. That's why I get the views that I got. If I just make a regular video and just talking, I can guarantee two to 4,000 views. How many people out here is talking to 2,000 people? Well, That's it's, a uh, lot of people. Honestly, looking at your video, the views have gone up as well. But I've been looking at your channel and, you know, the people watch you at like 9 a.m. in the morning. No yeah. matter the title. Like, I'm sorry to break Hassan Bubble's bubble here. You know what I mean? Hassan Campbell's bubble. But uh, but this man right here, 10 Doze Down, could literally talk about uh, Looney Tunes and DuckTales, and there will be a few hundred people there watching. Uh, mm -hmm. But but you know what I mean? It, it's it's him personally. You know what I mean? It, it's him with the uh, the bird bath in the back of his crib. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's just hating on you, to, not remembering the grind that he had to go through to get where he's at right now. See, that's the discouragement that he tries to do. The same thing he said, the old five old movement. Listen like that. If he went at it with you, he'd say you your channel boy. He'd say everything, right? Yo, you ain't got no views. That's him trying to discourage you and to discourage the people that you are nobody because you don't have view. Probably you, like the same people who tried to discourage him early on. You're uh -huh. not gonna go anywhere, you're not gonna do anything. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So now that you have got on top. I can't even imagine if I ever made it to a million subscribers and any video I put up, I got 500,000 views. I'm going to be the same mother. You ain't never going to find me ever switching up. You know why? Because we come, me and him cut from a totally different cloth. I come from struggle and real pain that I never would forget. I come from a road where I ain't going on that way, but I come from a place where it's ugly, real ugly. As far as personally, as far as seeing it, as far as being the guinea pig, as far as when something happened, the person passes me the gun. I come from a place like that where I was manipulated thinking that this was the right thing to do shooting and doing all this street dumb shit i would never glorify that i would never put that out there i come from a different place i put 21 years in right which i don't glorify and i hate the fact that i had to go through that but that was something that has saved me because I, if i would have remained out here in the path that i was on and the things that i was doing like saladin you know saladin he's uh, another yeah. 
do, but of course. he knows. Like I sat down and I expressed to him, I took him to the neighborhood where I'm from, and I told him, like, yo, the different shit that I do, how sick I was thick, the stupid shit. And I don't even talk about it. The sick shit and the way my mindset was that I was doing, right? And uh, look, this is another thing. This is how I know, and I'm proud of myself that I made it. It only ain't about views or nothing. It's about me making me happy and being proud of me that I was able to get through to somebody. There was a time when Hassan Campbell said, uh, yeah, you ten toes down, you monkey. I hope your mother, I hope your kids. I'm like, God damn, this is coming cold. He was saying, yeah, I throw it down the steps. My mother's 84 years old, right? My mom's at the time was, uh, she had cancer. They only gave her a couple of months to live, right? Now, I'm a mama's boy. Like, a, I'm past, I don't know nobody. I don't think nobody as much a mama's boy as me. As much grandma's as guy. I'm a grandma's boy. Your grandma's boy? Yeah, I'm a grandma guy, yeah. Yeah, like, I go to hell and back. I had incidents in when I was locked up, I was on the phone with my mother one time and she was choking and the phone went off. I said, oh shit, this is it right here. I went to, because we were in prison, you could tell the CEO, yo, listen, I need you to call to the watch commander. They got a call over here, send the ambulance to this address. That They can do that. So okay. I'm telling the CEO, he's like, oh, I can't do it. Went back to my shit, put my shit on, tighten up. I said, all right, officer, I'm gonna give you one more chance. You're going to call up there and tell them to send an ambulance to my mother because if my mom's die due to you spending all this time with me talking to you, I'm going to murder you. He was like, what the? I said, now you either pull that pen or you get on the phone. He got right on the phone and called. He, they know Because they never seen that side of me. All this big, cool, laughing, happy, jolly. But when they seen that side, they said he has to be serious because he about to lose his mind. I didn't even care. I, said, I will. That point. And I will just, I don't care. So at the time when Hassan was doing that with my moms, right? I thought I understand this and that. They gave him four months to live and I'm going through and I'm over there helping my moms. Look at the blessing, right? None of that shit affected me. I didn't feel no type of way. I didn't like, yo, like, I didn't feel nothing. My mom's ended up beating it. They can't find a trace of cancer in her body. Right. Right. So what would have happened if I would have went and did something or took it personal or whatever? So I said, I'm proud of myself because I've showed growth. I showed growth in myself. I've showed growth in my in my actions. I get upset. I be wanting to knock my head off sometimes. But I showed growth, and 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 that's the whole thing. That's what it's about. It's about growing, and being able to dissect and say, you know what, now, nah, you know what, I'm not gonna smack the shit out of you. I'm gonna make you sit down and eat these can of vegetables, you bitch ass nigga. That's why when I catch one of them, I got a can of vegetables in my car. I keep it both of my cars. I got a can of vegetables in there, cause when I catch them, right? See, I know a, a lot of people talk all that tough gangster shit. I'm not talking tough gangster shit. I know I can fight. I know my strength. I'm a strong. And I know it's not too many people out here who got their shit together, who's in that gym, who's doing everything, especially them. When I catch them, I'm going to sit you, I'm going to put the camera and I'm going to sit you down. I'm going to let people see it. I'm going to put you, I'm going to beat you up. Now, eat these vegetables. Because we know kids they eat their vegetables. They don't like eating their vegetables. I make you eat your vegetables. Okay. That's right. You can see that on YouTube, Ten. You can do uh, that on YouTube because you know what I mean. I was wondering where that was going. I was like, I don't know. If you you can do, do that. that. You can't be on YouTube beating yeah. people up. They go to the precinct. Exactly. You can't go to the police and say he made me eat eating their veggies. If you yeah. have these dudes eating their greens, man, yeah. that's gonna go viral. Eat your vegetables. Now, get ready you know. for your greens, Hassan. I hope you like your veggies. Yeah, I'm gonna make him eat his vegetables. See, he always talked this gun shit, this and that. that. Let me tell you, let me just give you those out there some game, right? One thing you never do. This is coming from a dude that comes from the streets, just like you come from. I'm not saying I'm smaller than you or better, but I'm just telling you I know how to do the game much better. You never tell nobody that you hold it. 
Five God said, I always got the hammer on me. Hassan Campbell, you run down on me. I got the, 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 the. You talk that dumb shit. Let me tell you something in prison. You know the first thing dudes do in jail? Bitch made dudes do in jail? When they got beef with somebody, if I got, if he got beef with somebody upstairs, to make sure you ain't got that knife on you, they tell the CO, yo, I think this dude gonna stab somebody when he come out. The CO gonna go search this. When he come out, you gonna go through him. And now when you come out, they know you empty handed. You stupid. And I told, let's, I told the dummy before the fifth grade, I told him, I said, you dumbass nigga, you on YouTube telling people you keep a gun on you, that you running around. You know all they got to do to your stupid ass is call the police on you before they attack your stupid ass. They'll see you. Oh, there you go. Call the police. Yeah, this guy got a gun. He in this car. This is the license plate. Police roll down on you. No gun, no nothing. Okay, now we going to go smoke this nigga. We going to go finish him. We going to go finish him. You don't go telling people I got all this beef and all this other shit. He got beef with rappers. He got beef with gangbangers. He got beef from that. So now when the smoke come, right, it ain't going to be no investigation. Investigate what? We don't know who did it. You got beef with too many people. Anybody could have did it. Then you got your kids out there. You got Man, listen, man. Hate runs deep. Hate runs deep. When he was out that night, when he was out that night, on God, on my mama, sent me a picture with him in the club. Sent me a picture with him going in. Before he started the video in, a dude sent me a picture said, yo, Hassan Campbell's at the garage. He go to flip. I looked, I said, all right, that's cool. Why, what's up? Why you sent me this? Nah, I was just saying. I said, all right, thanks, bro. And I left it at that. Then I seen the video with him up there, making a video out there and all this and that. I said, this is crazy. That's how easy it is. Some Look, you know, my, my, my phone number is up on my joint. Anybody could have hit me. I don't know who number that was. They just sent me this shit. I don't know who it was. I didn't investigate to find out who it was, man. But they sent me the picture. I still have it in here. Facts, 1,000%. I ain't got a cap. So, I could have took that opportunity and go to over there. I could have got anybody. Because one thing about me, right? I preach it. I talk it. I try to help make change in people. But you always going to have those who's just like, yo, 10, I don't give a f about that shit you talking, nigga. I'm out here getting money. This is what I do. You got anybody I can throw in the trunk? What? Nigga, give me somebody to throw in the trunk. That's all I want to talk to you about. If you tell me to keep that shit on YouTube, I'm going to throw a nigga in the trunk. And they all laughing first, son. You know, where the bubble? I always got connect with them. Yo, I got somebody throwing the trunk. Where we so we at? We at? What do you got? There's nothing. This is his address. This is who he is. He go picture. You can plot on them. They got all kind of trackers out there today. I got a tracker that I bought. I put in my own car. I got a track in there, and I can check. Steal my car if you want. I go right on my phone. Okay, he right here. He just turned the engine off. I'm going to go right the over there to you. I know where you at. They got trackers on phones where they tracking niggas and shit. Running up on them, kidnapping them, doing that dumb shit. Your little stupid ass. They throw the track on your car and follow you to your girl's graduation. You dumb niggas. He's a stupid ass. It's so easy. See, one thing about me, the judge said it. He said, this guy right here, he's manipulating the system. He didn't say I was a manipulator. He said, I manipulate the uh, criminal justice system. I took it as a disrespect. What is he talking about? I didn't see it until going and learning about myself and seeing, God damn, I was a manipulator. I was able to move just by talking and kicking and whispering and talking to him and showing him because I'm a schema. I know how to figure things out. I'm like, okay, boom. I got it. What you mean you got it? I got it, nigga. Figure it out. This is how we're going to get them. I scheme and plot. But Today, I teach kids, you know what? What you want to be? I, I can sit, Mike D, I can sit with a group of kids, right? And they can ask me questions. I said, what you want to be when you grow up? That's what you want to be? Tell me about yourself real quick. All right, stop talking. I could go in my mind. I could scheme and plot. All right, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to start like this, right? You're going to start. You're going to go to the corner. 
You're gonna go to this corner of your block. This is where you're from. You're gonna go out there. This is the and not to start breaking shit down with every individual, every kid individually. I could break it down. I just I don't know. I just got that gift. I got that gift of gab. I've got that gift of being able to put shit together in my mind real quick. I they had this program, right? I don't know if you ever did this before, Mikey. They had this program. Even when I went to school, when it came to getting my GED and going to college and all that, I said, I'm not sitting in this classroom. Talk I'm to me. What's the program? I want to know if I did it. program called AVP. You ever been in that program? What does that stand alternative for? Alternative to Violence Program. What Alternative Violence Program? Yeah. Those initials seem to be kind of memorable to me. What does this program entail? Well, they teach you about your uh your triggers, they teach you about you know uh just violent your violent street, why you commit crime, why are you so violent, and they help try to teach you about how to get out of your violent thinking. Is this a jail thing or a school thing? No, it was a jail thing, but it's in the streets now. It's okay. AVP. I've never I never actually been locked up. Okay, but they have it out here in the streets too. So if you ever uh do something, let's say if you hit a girl and you and, and you get locked up for domestic, they could send you to AVP or they can send you to a program and it might not be called AVP but it's going to be a violent program when you got to go there but they teach them along the same lines the same thing but within this program right we got about 20 people so the 20 people they sent me out because you know I mean they're talking shit yeah I know I'm smart I can figure shit out I can figure shit out so they made teams they said yeah okay so you got I don't need no team they said like boom so they take everybody and they wrap arms around each other everybody's wrapped up 20 people, everybody's wrapped up in a tangle in a big ass group. And you gotta go in there and you gotta untangle them. You gotta say, okay, you step out, bring your arms around him. But they, you they can't they can't unlock their hands. And you gotta bring them out to where they everybody's in the circle, still holding hands. They start in a circle, they come together, and they just start. I don't know how they start locking it all in together. Man, you think it's a game, Mike? I went in, I looked at them, I said, okay, hold on. Let me see where you at, where you at, where you at, boom. All right, you step out, you step in. You step in, you step out. Boom, 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 boom. Broke it down. They like, oh shit. When it was over, they was in the circle. I was in the middle of the circle, and everybody was around me holding their hands. They like, how the f did you figure that out? I don't know. It just happened. I don't know. Some of us got it, some of us don't. Some of us got that gift. That's some good shit right there. Yeah. They was I was in the middle and everybody was holding hands, and I was in the circle. And that's why with the kids also, what I like to do, I like to have them sit in a circle and I whisper in one ear, pass it down. And when that shit get to the end and when it come back to me, I say what I told him over here. I can say uh, the cat in the hat. You can say something simple, the cat in the hat. He pat cat in the hat. When that shit come to me, it'd be like the hat was on the cat. I'd be like, hold on. Now we got to figure out who fucked this up. Okay, what you told him? What you told him? Blah, blah, blah. And then when it get from this kid to that one, what you told him? No, he had told me the to cat. Okay, go back. What you told him? I told him cat in the hat. I said, see how you could say one thing and it'll change before get back to the next person. And I was just showing that to say that you can't be telling everybody anything because when he get back to the police, the story going to be changed around. Right. And that's what happened with Hassan Campbell. Or he even was just in the streets. The story was switched around. He got locked up for a murder. I can admit to one murder he got locked up for. You know why he got locked up for that murder? Because a dude named Nudie, these people in the building, nobody knew who do it. Bitch made knew who do it. Knew he did it. Knew Nudie did it. He started running around. Yo, you know I got them niggas up in there. Yeah, man. Bitch ass niggas. Word, word. He starts saying he did it. They locked his stupid ass up. My question to him was, how the f did you get out then? How you got out? For that one murder. I don't know about the other two. I know that one. How you get out of there? Did you tell on Nudie? Well, Nudie's dead now, but did you tell on them? All this tough Bronx River talk, I wrote, ran, robbed niggas. Brother. Didn't you see the video, you didn't see the video with me and him where he said that he shitted on himself when Nudie came to him? That he had a gun with no bullets? It's crazy. Me and him, and he said, yo, I had a gun, I didn't have no bullets. Shitted on myself. The gun fell down in my pants leg. He searched me. 
the gun fell down in my pants leg. I guess while he was coming up, the gun went past. He didn't feel it. He said he was going to murder me. He told me to go down inside this little hole in the basement. He said, I'm not going down there. I'm not going down there. Because he knew Nudie was going to take him down there and murder him down there. Oppose him in front of everybody. So if you this tough Bronx River dude who ran the whole Bronx River, all people got to do is just, if, if y'all don't like what he's saying in reference to him being the toughest street, got caught bodies, say, what about Nudie? <laughs> he ain't going to answer that. He'll cuss you out. You mean what about Nudie? What about Nudie? He ran you out of Bronx River. Your mother left Bronx River because they ran you out of there. You didn't leave because you wanted to. It was in danger. 10, what year did Nudie die? I don't know what year he died. I got a picture of Nudie, too. I don't know what year he died. 